What is going right today? We are reviewing the Boss Fight Studios MLW Jacob Fatu action figure. Now, I've never reviewed an MLW figure before, but I think this one is a little bit different and it does call for a full-fledged review. We have Jacob Fatu, who just recently debuted on Friday Night SmackDown. If you guys missed that, he is going to be a massive problem on the WWE roster, and I cannot wait to see how they book this guy. And like how he involves with the bloodline, it should be cinema as we go throughout the wrestling year for WWE. But this is one of the figures that I had to get in my collection. I've always sort of wanted this figure in my collection. Collection, but I never really had a huge amount of reason to pick this figure up. So when I learned that Jacob Fatu might be debuting on SmackDown, I went ahead and grabbed this figure before because I knew that this figure would probably shoot up in price because now that he's in WWE, you guys know that Mattel is going to pump one out, but it's going to take at least a year to get him in any sort of form. And so I went ahead and bought this figure and I think it looks pretty cool, but we're going to break it down and review it here today. Find out what it's all about and see if it's worth a damn. But here's your front viewing window. Pretty solid packaging. I'd say it's pretty standard size. We're going to do size comparisons and all that in the video, but on the side, you do have Jacob Fatu. You have an image of the figure there, MLW. Shot of the character on the front, you got him there. You got MLW again, Jacob Fatu. And then on the side, you got the handsome fellow there. On the back, you get a shot of the figure. Got some different bios, nice action shots of the figure. And then we have the rest of the figures in the wave. Now, depending on how this review goes, I might pick up the rest. We'll have to see how that goes. I don't really have any interest to pick up the rest, but you never know, Brad. Nonetheless, man, here is our Jacob Fatu figure. We're going to crack him out of the packaging, take a look at him, see what he's all about, and find out how how he fits in with your WWE action figure collection. Well, that being said, let's shut the hell up and dive into it. So here we have Jacob Fatu out of his packaging, spinning around, of course, as we always do here in the reviews. And I'm pretty impressed with this figure, man. Of course, we have to dive in all the details. We're going to break the figure down. I have been posing him around. And I can say that I am impressed so far. But we are going to, of course, dive into everything, let you know what you get with the figure, break it down, see how he compares to WWE Elites. You know how he fits into the collection. Is he too small? All those different things. And you can make the decision for yourselves. But so far, I've been, I'm pretty damn impressed. I'm actually quite impressed. I found myself say, wow a couple times while holding the figure. So this should be a fun one, man. Let's buckle the hell up. Let's take a look at Jacob Fatu's accessories, and then we'll take a closer look at Jacob Fatu himself. So diving into the accessories you get with the Jacob Fatu MLW figure, you get two interchangeable heads, you get a weapon accessory, and you get interchangeable hands. Now getting into head sculpt number one, we kind of have a serious or pissed off straight face, and I think this works pretty good. I think the likeness is very good. Not a current 2024 look, but the likeness overall to his face is very good here. I like the hair sculpts and everything, the beard looks really good as well. Just a really good realistic look for him, and I think that they captured him quite well. I think all of his hair looks good, his beard looks good. Very nice indeed. I actually like this quite a bit. And then the head sculpt I like more is the yelling head sculpt, which I think looks badass. Just a great looking likeness. Again, he's pissed off. He's yelling. Just awesome, man. I like these expressive head sculpts. You know, we, we like to talk a lot about yelling, but again, I don't mind if they're yelling if you have the alternate. If I have a yelling and I have a pissed off or just a general face, I take that every single day of the week with the hair straight back looks very good. Pretty phenomenal head sculpts, all things considered. These look good, and I like both of them. Now, another really cool accessory is the barbed wire kendo stick. Now, I think it feels like you could possibly pull this off. I'm not going to fully commit to it, but it does move around, which makes me, you know, it leads me to believe that you could possibly take all that off if you wanted to, but it's a nice sculpt. Got the white handle, and the sculpts are all nice. You could put this easily with the rest of your wrestling figures. If you didn't want to use it for this figure, you could put it with your WWE figures. The handle may be a bit thin, but I think you could get away with it but it's a nice accessory. Really cool. I I'll always appreciate a good weapon accessory. It doesn't matter what it is. I'll take a weapon accessory. Even if it's completely random and makes no damn sense whatsoever, I'm going to take a weapon accessory every single time. They could throw in a weapon with every figure ever, and I'd never complain about it. It's kind of like cloth goods, you know what I mean? And then for your interchangeable hands, you do get fisted hands, and these hands are really well sculpted, and they're good scale. They don't look like baby hands or anything. I think they did a good job on these hands, but the sculpts are really good. It looks like a ball of fist, and he does come with fists to beat the hell out of people. Outside of fisted hands, he also comes with gripping hands, so he can grip the kendo stick, so you can put it in the left or right hand there, which is very nice. Again, nice sculpt work here. He does come with a left Samoan spike or thumbs up style hand. Of course, this is for, I mean, you can do the cut the throat, you can do the Samoan spike, you can give him the thumbs up, thumbs down, Batista style. It looks very good. I like this. And then you also come with a right off hand that's kind of relaxed slash grabbing. And this could be a choking hand. You could use this for a choke slamming, a slamming hand, you know, hand out. Out. There's a lot of uses for this wide open hand, but it looks like a nice relaxed open hand. So getting into Fatu himself, starting out at the top of the head sculpt, I again like the head sculpts a hell of a lot. I do like the yelling head sculpt more, but there's something about having just a stern, pissed off head sculpt for any talent that works.
lurks, man. They're wrestlers. They like to get in the ring, beat the hell out of people, man. You need that stern, straight face, especially some Stone Cold killers like Jacob Fatu and guys like that. But I think that it sits well on the on the neck and everything. He does have his tattoos on his traps, which is very nice. And they do sort of have this Ultimate Edition style torso, you know, the AEW style torso where it's an upper diaphragm or an upper torso and then a lower torso piece. So no torso cut like an elite or anything. He does have his nipples in there, which is always appreciated, of course. He does have a butterfly joint in there, and we'll go over the articulation, but it is nice to see the tattoo continue on to the butterfly joint. That's a nice detail that a lot of people miss out on. Nice big arms in there. You know, I don't worry about the arm size or anything. I think that it fits in pretty well. Double jointed arms, which are always appreciated. I like the sculpt work of the muscles and everything looks very good. It doesn't look super flat or anything. They actually looked very toned and nice. Back is also looking nice. Going down to the crotch piece, you do have this crotch piece that kind of goes up on the belly a little bit that's pretty accurate. You do have the green line going around and then he does have these logos on the side here. Reminded me of early 2000s Edge or something. But it does look good. You got the green graphics with the black pants and he does have the Umaga style pants which look very good as well. You have the greens at the bottom. Double jointed knees as well. Just very good scope work overall. I don't hate any of this. It looks very well made. You know what I mean? But you go down, he does have his spat or his black ankle tape. He has his shins in there and then he does have his bare feet and they do look pretty good. The feet do look a little small but they don't hinder the figure whatsoever. They look pretty damn good. Alright man, the moment of truth. A lot of people probably waiting on this portion. What's the articulation and what is the scaling like? We're going to get into that right now. And starting out at the head sculpt, he is kind of like a Mattel figure in terms of no ball hinge or anything. It is just a regular ball joint. So you can get some posing out of it. Like the head sculpt's removed a little bit, but you do get that kind of Michael Myers style tone there. He can look down a little bit and up a little bit. So it's not quite as hindered as a Mattel figure is, I think. Upper diaphragm does get some good rocking right here. Really good range of motion on this torso. Look, he can lean all the way over right there and it doesn't separate or anything, which is good. In the shoulders, the shoulders can go all the way up and down. So it goes above 90. You get the full rotation right here. You get the bicep swivel. You get the double jointed arm. The butterfly joints, I'm not noticing a ton of range of motion, but you do get a little bit there. You know, I think you do get a little bit there, which is better than zero. I don't think you can put it on par with an ultimate edition in terms of dragging it a completely across, but I think it's better. I'd rather have it than not have it. You know what I mean? I think it does add a little bit to the figure. One thing that I really love is on the wrist, you don't get traditional wrist hinge. You get one that would be really well made for a gunman or like a shooter figure. So like your G.I. Joe figures, and I don't collect the G.I. Joe line, so I'm not sure if Hasbro implements this. They definitely should if they don't, but he has the hinge that goes up and down this way instead of like this, which I would like to have both ways, but I will take this right here. I think this is cool because you, when you write, you know, if you're raising this above the head, you can really like torque a chair or some sort of kendo stick or whatever it is and really load up the power on that to beat the hell out of somebody. So I, I do like that you do get the wrist hinge right there. Very creative and nice. And this is something you don't see a lot on figures, which is why I wanted to talk about it, but it would fit a lot of gunman figures or figures that shoot or have guns. So that was a really, that popped me pretty good. I thought that was pretty good there. In terms of the rest of the figure in the lower portion, he does have a good split. He can kick forward pretty good, I would say. I mean, you get about 90 degrees, I'd say. You do get upper thigh cut, but it's not your traditional cut. It does rotate right there, though. You do get double jointed knees, which is always glorious. He doesn't have your traditional calf cut, but he does have the traditional shin cut, which is always appreciated. Now, if this didn't rotate, that would be bummerific, but at least you do get the ankle rotation or the boot rotation here, and he does have a great ankle pivot, and his feet move down and up. So, in terms of articulation, feels phenomenal in the hand. Can move around quite well, but it is time to scale this guy see how he fits in with the rest of your bloodline and the rest of your WWE action figures. So for Jacob Fought 2 figure comparisons, we do have our bloodline, our different inclinations of bloodline members. From left to right, we have Jey Uso, Roman Reigns, Jacob Fought 2, Solo Sokoa, and Jimmy. And while the figure is not perfect in terms of scale, I think you can get away with it. I don't think it's perfect scale by any stretch. It could definitely be taller. He is 6'1", but he's also 280 pounds. But in my personal opinion, I think he is a little too short. But can you get away with it? Absolutely. I think you can get away with it. I don't think it's going to hinder it too much. For your displays and figure photography, you could get away with this. You know, you manipulate some angles, you do some different things. This is easily doable, something that you can adjust on the fly, and you can make it happen, but he is too short in my own personal opinion. I think that in an ideal world, he'd be a little bit taller. I'd probably put him, I'd probably put him right here. He's probably just like maybe a quarter inch too small or maybe a quarter inch too short. But then like the red, like his arms, I think can suffice. 
His torso size isn't the worst of all time. I think his legs are just a little bit too small in terms of the girth of his legs or the size of his legs and calves. But I am happy to report the scaling of this figure is decent enough that you could get away with it. So, you know, you'll just have to play around with that. But then I also wanted to get in here and do a couple more comparisons. And for your other comparison, we do have my custom Tomatonga and a Cody Rhodes Top Talents Elite. And really, now that I look at it like this, I think this could suffice. I think I think that it scales pretty well. Now, Cody Rhodes is supposed to be 6'2", so I don't know, maybe it does scale well. There's just something off about it. When you see it in person, it doesn't look like it's completely to scale. But it, again, it may just be because his legs are too skinny. I think that's probably what it is more than his height. I think his legs are just too skinny, maybe. But that about does it for your Jacob Fatu figure comparisons. But I think that about wraps up our MLW Jacob Fatu Boss Fight Studios action figure review. I like this figure a hell of a lot, man. I'm actually really, really impressed with Boss Fight Studios. I want to say this is the first ever figure I've ever had from them. And I'm very impressed. I do wish that the scale was a little bit better. I don't think that it's a perfect match for sure. I don't think that it's the most egregious thing in the world in terms of, you know, he's just like a foot short or something like that. He is close, but he definitely is too short. He's definitely not in perfect scale, but I think you could make it work for a display if you wanted to do so. And, you know, you can dress him up in some accessories. There may be a way to, I'm, I mean, I'm sure there is. If you took these head sculpts, you could probably make an Ultimate Edition or an Elite form of him. And I may experiment with that. We'll see what we can do. I'm sure there's some sort of form meal you can use or something like that to make this guy into a WWE Elite or an Ultimate Edition. Or maybe, hell, even maybe an AEW figure or something that you could use to make him fit in more accurately with your collection. But the figure by itself feels really damn good in the hand. He has tight joints. I love that he has that hinge in the wrist, the up and down. It's kind of, I mean, it's really made for like gunmen or something, but it still works so good here. I love the accessories. He feels phenomenal in hand, moves around well. This figure's damn, damn good. Really damn good. I actually was giddy like posing it around. It's really fun. It's a, it's a good figure. I think you guys will enjoy this figure. If you already have this figure, I'd like to know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. It's kind of a beast. It's damn good. I like the likeness. I like the kendo stick accessory. The interchangeable hands are very tight. I just had a ton of fun with it. I thought it was awesome. So I'm definitely going to be picking this guy up and posting him around randomly like I do with a lot of good figures. And you guys know that that's one of my things that kind of points to a really good figure. If you are constantly picking it up and just kind of posing him around and doing whatever, then that's kind of the signs of what is to be a really good action figure. But but I think that is going to wrap the review up. I, again, man, I'm dumbfounded. I'm dumbfounded how good the figure is. Really damn impressed. But before we get out of here, a huge shout out to our Patreon members. We had a brand new sign up yesterday and a huge shout out to my man Christian Billick for signing up absolute monster over there man thank you so much for your support man thank you so much for your patronage I really appreciate it but I think that is going to wrap up the video man thank you guys so very much for watching I hope you guys did enjoy I'd love to know your thoughts on this figure down below he was a fun it was a ton of fun to shoot ton of fun to shoot see him in the arena but I'm getting the hell out man follow me on Instagram Twitter and TikTok at my damn toys I'll see you guys in the next video have a blessed one and I'll catch you guys later <laughs>